Guys, we got a whole lot of boxes to open up today. You might remember that when we set up the Ancient Gardens Aquarium, Awasa, that's right, Awasa, not Awase, apparently I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time, they reached out to me and they sent me one of these very nice Biomaster 350 canister filters to help out with the filtration. And since I've had this filter running on this tank, I've really enjoyed it. I've wanted to get more of the Awasa products and that's exactly what we have here. So we have a whole bunch of different filters. We even have some terrariums. There's also some pond stuff hiding in here somewhere. Awasa decided that they wanted to go all out, help me out here, sponsor the channel for the rest of the year, and get me the gear that I need. Let's start here with one of these big boxes in the back, guys. We've got the combat knife ready to go. Let's do it. I'm gonna pull this thing up here. I don't know exactly what it is. I have a sneaking suspicion that it's one of the terrariums that we talked about. Let's pop this guy open here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely what it is. Oh man, this thing is huge. Just gotta pull this thing out very carefully. Oh my gosh, it's humongous. Oh, get out of the way, box. Whoa. Here's a better shot of it for you guys. This thing is called the Biorb Air 60 and it's a humidity controlled terrarium. Serpa Design actually got one of these a little while back on his channel. Wasa sent him one, he set it up. So I'll put a link for that video in the description if you guys wanna see a complete overview of this thing getting set up. But this thing is crazy, man. Let's try and get this thing out though. I wanna take a better look at it. This thing is humongous. I don't know if I'm supposed to pick it up like this, but it's not falling apart yet. So it's very lightweight. It feels like it's some sort of plastic or acrylic. Not sure, but look at this thing, man. It's humongous. We're gonna create the weirdest little world in here, guys. This is gonna be really fun. I don't know what else it comes with. This isn't supposed to be a complete unboxing or review of this guy. We'll get there eventually. I've only opened up one box, I'm sweating. Not a good sign, but guys, I know we have two of these. That must be what this other really gigantic boxes, so so we'll save opening this box for another day. Guys, the terrariums I think are super, super cool. As I continue to get more and more aquariums, I find myself not wanting more maintenance and more work on my hobbies because the tanks just kind of take up all of it. So the terrariums, the paludariums, and maybe the other kind of things that I'm working on that I'm trying to keep a secret, I guess they're not a secret anymore, um, those are gonna fit in really nice because for the most part, they're a lot less maintenance compared to an aquarium. So this is perfect, man. We got two of these guys. That's gonna give us a lot of fun work to do. Let's see what else we got here, guys. This one on top here, I already know what it is because it says it on the top. This is a Filtro Smart Thermo 200. So this is a canister filter. I'm really interested in trying out these smaller canister filters because they're just a product that a lot of people want these days. A lot of people are getting into the smaller aquariums and they don't wanna have filtration that shows, you know, hang on back filters are traditionally my favorite thing for small aquariums, but a lot of people out there like the canisters and I myself like the canisters as well. This one has a max flow rate of 210 gallons per hour and it also has a built-in heater, so that's really nice. Let's pull this thing out and take a look at it though. We got the tubing here, just like what comes with any other canister filter. We got the heater and then do we have a little handle? Yes, we do. That will help out tremendously. Got a manual, of course, and then we have the inflow-outflow pipes. We have a bunch of attachments as well as some media that comes with it. So it looks like we got two bags of ceramic rings. Is this a, this is a base plate, I guess, that it was sitting on? We kind of got aggressive there when we pulled this thing out. There we go. This is the size of the 200, and I think we actually have some smaller canisters in here that don't have heaters because they're even smaller. Those ones are gonna be really fun to check out. But again, this is uh, you know meant for a smaller aquarium. The reason why I ended up getting a few of the different sizes they had is because I wanna figure out what size of tank I like to run this on, what size of tank I like to run the smaller ones on. Let's take this stuff, let's put it back in the box, and then we will probably come back to one of these canister filters a little bit later on in the video. Also guys, don't forget there's gonna be links to all of these products that we're unboxing down in the description so you can check them out if you're interested. Let's take a look at this one next, guys. This looks like it's a pond pump. Yes, it is. So this is the Aquamax Eco Premium, which is, I think this is one of their smaller 
um, big pond pumps. It's kind of confusing. They have a ton of pond stuff, and I was trying to find something that would fit my kind of small pond that we have in the greenhouse. Based on the size of this box, I think this might be a little too big. Boom. Oh, wow, that's, that's really, that's, that's humongous. Yeah, this is like a, this is like a proper pond pump for somebody that has a, a big pond. My pond is, is hardly a pond, right? If you guys follow along, you know. Look at that, that's like, what is that? Like a one and a half inch output? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, never a bad thing to have an extra uh, awesome pond pump on your hands, guys. We're gonna see if this even comes close to making sense for our application. We might have to go give this to somebody that could really use it. Let's see, I'm opening it up. I don't, I don't really wanna do that. <laughs> Yeah, this thing is wild. This is 2,000 gallons per hour. You can adjust it to be less than that. It looks like, I don't know if that's what this is down here, but wow, there goes my box. Let's set this over here for now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's open up another one of the things that I know what it is. Yep, here's the skimmer. So we were originally gonna be making a skimmer for the pond down in the greenhouse, but then I kind of, got to the point where I realized we didn't really need a skimmer, but then I saw Owasa had these pre-built skimmers that might be kind of perfect, but I think, again, they're just gonna turn out to be a little too big for our application. If I had a bigger pond, man, I think this stuff would be amazing, but unfortunately, yeah, this is, this is huge. Check this thing out, this thing is, this thing is wild too. What the heck? Yeah, so I mean probably not for our setup, but guys check it out. This skimmer is fully adjustable So I think you can adjust this thing. Where is it all the way up to 40 inches? So you can raise it and tighten it up there So you get it at the right water level and then it's meant to hook into this pump or any of the pumps from this series and so you're gonna be drawing water from here and you can also be drawing water from the skimmer as well so you can have like a 50 50 split and maybe i think you can even decide how much you want to have the skimmer pole versus the main pump so you just connect these two with tubing and then you have your outflow to your waterfall or whatever and of course i asked for two of them so we got another one down there i don't think we're going to be digging up the entire backyard this summer to make a pond that's worthy of this equipment but it's really great to have it at least when we get to that point eventually we'll have some really awesome equipment for it i think that leaves us with only two more boxes guys so this has got to be a filter and then I don't know what this is. We got a little goodie bag here. Oh, they sent me a hat and a shirt. Do I look legit now? Gray oh man, gray t-shirts, oh my favorite color. How did you guys know? Hello Mike, enjoy the goodies. Thank you Ashley. There's a bunch of stuff in here. All right, here we go. So here's the Filto Smart 60. So a very small canister filter. This is what I'm really excited about playing around with upstairs in the uh, smaller tanks that we have up in the office. So this is an 80 gallon per hour canister filter, a little mini one. This is super cool. I think we're gonna go run upstairs with this and try it out on a tank. It also comes with media. We got two bags of ceramic rings. We have the attachments and the tubing, which I'll put over there. And then check out this little baby canister filter, man. That is so cool. Let's set that over here. Take this box out. Let's see what else we got in here. We have, okay, we have some pumps, some more of those. Let's just set those over there. So this also comes with the 60. It's a little clip to hang that little tiny canister filter on the side of the aquarium if you want. I don't know what's in here. We got a couple of Optimax 250s, just a utility pump. Nice thing to have. We can actually make good use of these on some future projects. Let's see what the last thing is in here, guys. This is looking like maybe another canister filter. This is the Filto Smart 100 that comes with a heater, so it's a thermo edition as well. Another small one. Again, we're trying to figure out what size of these are gonna work for what tanks. This is 160 gallons per hour flow rate. So it's recommended to up to a 30 gallon. However, I'd probably run this thing on up to a 20 gallon. I guess it just depends on how planted your tank is and what you have in it. But yeah, this is gonna be cool. So we got one more package. Let's see what's inside. It's getting extra sweaty down here without the fans on. So I'm glad we're wrapping this up. Ooh, 
Ta-da, another Biomaster Thermo 350. So the same canister filter that we have over here on Ancient Gardens, Biomaster Thermo 350. What's the one that I have? A 350? No, this is a 250. 650? I'm confused. Is this the same filter that I have over there? No way. Let's check it out. Yeah, we have like the 600. So this is the 350. I just really got confused. The 350 is recommended for up to 90 gallons. It's got 300 gallons per hour flow rate. I would still probably think this is a good filter for like a 75 gallon tank based on the flow rate. And you know, a 75 gallon, it's a four foot tank. You probably want to have some accessory water movement going in there. So something like a, a power head or a circulation pump to kind of counteract that, at least on a heavily planted tank or a tank that has fish that, that like to have more flow. So we have this. I think this is what I wanted to try running on the 40 gallon tanks to see how it handles that kind of a system. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, let's take these little ones upstairs and see what they fit on. So here's the Filto 60 guys. We got the ceramic media over here on this side. This is the stuff that it came with. I just rinsed it off. The top of it sits on just like this. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of filter floss over on this side. This is where the water first goes into the canister. We have a little divider here. There's space underneath the bottom for the water to flow under. And then it comes up through this chamber and then it's filtered out through this sponge. So it's kind of reverse of what we're used to. A lot of the filters in the US, they have the mechanical filtration first, and then it goes through the biomedia to try and keep the biomedia clean. That's not a super important thing to have happen, but if you're concerned about it, you can just do what I did and throw in a filter pad or some filter floss here before this, and then get that fine filtration before the biomedia. And then when you wanna clean it, you can just remove this and put it in a new piece. Just gonna lock this thing in place, and then we're gonna be using this little add-on so we can hang it on the side of the tank and turn this tiny canister filter into kind of a big hang-on back filter. Because I eventually wanna move this to different tanks to try it out, I didn't do anything special with the hosing. I left it all really long. Just know that you can make this look a lot better than the way it is now. But guys, all we need to do now is fill this thing up so we can just pop this cap open fill up the little canister and then plug it in. All right, we got it running. First impressions, it's very quiet. Let's give it a listen. Very little vibration going on in here, guys. It's only 80 gallons per hour, so the flow rate on this thing is obviously not gonna be good for tanks much more than 20 gallons. I'd say probably a 20 long is the biggest size tank I would run one of these things on. Just because of the turnover factor, I mean, if we had the desert tank running, I would be more than happy to give it a test on this. I think it would probably end up being a really good tank size for it. And just to be clear, I'm only talking if it's a super planted tank. If you had this thing packed full of fish, no plants, you would definitely want something more than that. Always talking about planted tanks here, guys. So that leaves me really with only one more comparison I want to make real quick guys so right here we have the Filto Smart 100 comes with a 100 watt heater that I took out of it here so it just fits in there locks in place and this is essentially analogous to a Fluval 106 canister filter I happen to have one right here that I've just had in the box for forever so comparing flow rates this filter is actually gonna have a little bit higher of a flow rate compared to the Fluval. This one comes in at about 145 gallons per hour, and this one is 160. It's kind of hard to tell here in the video, but it looks as if the volume for filter material is a little bit larger in the Fluval 106. Kind of hard to tell because the shapes are a little bit different. But really, the biggest difference is that we have the option to have a heater in this one, and we don't in this one. Obviously, the media compartments are very different as well, so I'm gonna carefully take this out because we have the filter in here. Let's remove this block. Again, we have the output being here in the center, which this foam block will surround. Water's gonna pour in through this side, guys. It's gonna go through this divider at the bottom. There's a little gap, and then it's going to passively make its way into these two sections before then being drawn out the top. So this section again holds the heater. You can take this out, not use it, fill this up with ceramic rings, or you can leave the heater in, fill it with ceramic rings. You could take this thing out, fill this up with ceramic rings, or kind of do whatever you want here. There's a lot of customization you could do with these filters. I like them. And if we come down here and take a look at the Filto Smart 
200, this is gonna be analogous to the Fluval 206, which is what we run here on the 40s. When we step up to this size, we're looking like the filter volume is at least the same, if not maybe a little bit bigger than the 206. And of course we do have the heater as well, which is a super nice touch. It's gonna to allow us to not have to have a heater in our tank, which is super awesome for aquascaping. So yeah guys, that's kind of the long and short of it. Obviously I have a bunch of new equipment here that I'm pretty much unfamiliar with. So we need to get to testing it out and see if we like it. We're gonna start by swapping out the Fluvals down here for the Filtosmart 200 thermos with the heaters and see if the flow rates really do match up between them and really evaluate what the best choice is. So thanks once again to Awasa for sending out all this stuff. Very much appreciate it. Don't forget guys, there's links to all of this stuff down on Amazon if you wanna check it out, compare prices, stuff like that. I'll be sure to let you know what my final thoughts are on a lot of these products once we get to that point. Thanks again so much for watching guys. Let me know what you think of the unboxing videos down in the comments below. I don't do them very often. They're kind of fun. Um, I feel like maybe I'm a little all over the place though. So let me know how I did, how you liked the video. If you wanna see more, um, your feedback is super important. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.